Hi everybody. Welcome back to Cabin Crafts. Um, today we're going to do a really fun sewing craft that goes with our uh, housewife. And you all remember the housewife uh, that I did the last time. Well, this is the finished product. There's my housewife. And I didn't show you all, but as many of you ordered kits. And so when you get the kit, you're going to get this twill tape and you fold it in half and sew it to the very tip point of your pocket so that you can roll it up and tie it shut. And then you won't lose any of your goodies. So here's our housewife all tied up. And uh, like I said, many of you ordered the kit. So there we go, there's my finished housewife. And later on in the video, I'm gonna show you some of the things that are in my housewife. But today we're gonna make something to put the housewife in which would be an 18th century pocket. Now this is my personal pocket. I bought this from Colonial Williamsburg when I went there, I think it was in 2017. Here's their little tag on the back, Colonial Williamsburg. And so where this goes is this, so, this ties to your side. And my 18th century skirts have big slits in the sides. See that? Look at that big slit. This is my chemise. There's the slit. So you would wear your pocket, you tie it on the inside under my little uh, waistcoat here. And I could reach into that slit and into my pocket through the slit. Or you can tie it to the outside, either or. Um, so that's my Williamsburg pocket. And I made a paper pattern from my Williamsburg pocket I just laid it out and traced it on some paper and then I made it to give myself a 5 8 inch seam allowance. This is probably one of the easiest projects you could ever sew. If you can just barely sew, you would be able to make a pocket. And some pockets were double. So there would be like, they would be attached. There'd be another one attached and it would go around your waist and you would have one on each side. So you'd have two pockets. But I usually just wear one. So we're gonna make, um, I'm gonna show you uh, very quickly how I made my pocket. I didn't bring the sewing machine today because it's just really not necessary. But I started on this pocket and this is probably going to be my new favorite. So this is actually a fabric called, if you're a quilter, Kansas Troubles. Um, this is a modern fabric, but it has that Jacobian viney look to it which would pass for 18th century, but this would also make a cute top, one of those short gowns that I make, because this was very popular in the 18th century, this viney Jacobian floral. And then we close up this part with just bias tape. But I'm gonna, un I'm gonna open this up, and I'm gonna just show you. This is wrong side out. And you can see that I, I clipped my curve. I clipped the curve here so that when I turn it right side up. So this is just two sides sewn together. And then a slit, the slit goes about halfway down the middle. And you can see the bias tape is sewn on the inside part and the outside. Now when you get down to here, this is where it gets a little bit fiddly. And I would suggest all of this was done. I sewed the pocket with the machine but I sewed the bias tape by hand, just like I do on my housewives. It only took 10 minutes. I timed myself. It only took 10 minutes to sew the binding all the way around the outside edge. And then another 10 minutes to sew it to the inside here. So it's, so, it's, it's, it's called a fell stitch or a hem stitch, it's just stitched. And besides that, if you're gonna wear it on the outside, you want things that are gonna show to the outside to be hand done anyway. And I don't know if you can see my hand stitches there or not, but they're all very tiny, very even. And so we're almost done with this little pocket. And I will put kits on the internet, again, like the housewives. And then for the string part, I have this wonderful, this is called twill tape. I got this off the internet. I think I even got it from Amazon, but it's exactly an inch wide. 
and I, I buy it by the roll because I use it on my housewives. I use it on my pockets. Here's another pocket that I finished. This one's just ticking material. And all you do is you just, you can take a piece of string and measure your waist and then tie the string and then snip it off to where it's comfortable and then measure your string that you just tied around your waist and then that gives you uh, what size waist you should have um, for, your, uh, for your pocket. And then you find the middle, find the middle of the, of the twill tape and you just fold this over I'm going to just lay it down here and fold it over just to sew it, show you. And you sew all the way across the top and then you stop. And that holds all of this together. It closes up the opening and it secures your bias tape right in there. And then that's it. You're done. So I brought some fun things to show you. What do I have in my housewife and what do I have in my pocket? Well, first of all, I'm going to put my housewife in my pocket. And in my pocket, I have some things to put in my pocket. I have, this is called a bodkin. Now this one's made out of bone. And what this was used for was for like what I'm, what I'm wearing right now. So this is just tied shut with ribbon. And it looks like I came untied here. How indecent. So you would just feed your ribbon through the eye and then you can lace up your stays or your, or your vest here like I'm wearing. This is an English bodice it's called. So I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put my bodkin in my housewife and I've got my little pair of stork scissors, and they actually had stork scissors then, I think. And then I have, this is a lovely little thing. Um, I don't have a chatelaine to show you, but a chatelaine was a piece of jewelry that women wore on the outside of their clothes that would have keys hanging down, probably their scissors, maybe a watch. Um, and this is a little cake of beeswax in between two bone pieces. It's threaded in there so this is to wax my thread now I don't have these things for sale I bought these things when I would go to reenactments so I'm gonna put my wax in here that goes in there and then I bought this little round walnut case this actually unscrews I think I'll save this for my pocket because I could put I could put something in that little box like some sort of a pomade maybe I made for my for my lips or you could even put more beeswax in that but this has a little screw lid on it and it's made from walnut isn't that isn't that the cutest little thing it's like a mini canister I'll put that in my pocket um I will put Ah, here's thread winders. Now, these are bone, and this one is shaped like a turtle. And this one, so here's another turtle. There's another little turtle with thread wrapped around him. I'm holding him up by his head, and then these are his little arms and legs. And then here's a fish. This is also a thread winder. This is also bone. And you can just wind that thread around his little fins. And I got all of these at rendezvous and reenactments. So you need to go to some of these in, the, in your area if you can find them because they've got, I got this at a rendezvous. I got the thread winders at a rendezvous. So I'm gonna put my little thread winders in here. Okay. And I got a couple of coins. And just so they won't, I've got one more pocket that I don't have anything in, and just so they don't fall out or they're not jingling around loose in my big pocket, I'm gonna put them in there. So now my pocket is full 
of little treasures. Oh, I can't forget, I gotta have some buttons, so I'll stick some buttons in there. And I would have needles here on my case, but I didn't, I didn't put any in there. So there's some buttons. So now I'm gonna roll this all up. And tie it back. So like I told you in the in the housewife video, these these things actually went all the way up until like maybe World War One, maybe even World War Two. I think in World War Two they had a canvas sewing kit that the soldiers would get. So these go back several centuries. So here's mine. So I'm going to put that in my Williamsburg pocket. So now I always have a sewing kit. So I'm going to put that in there. I'm going to put my little walnut box in there. I don't have a chatelaine. So here's my keys. These are keys to my, these are keys to say my, this probably be to the sugar chest, maybe the front door, the tea caddy and my secretary desk, because I don't want anybody reading my correspondence. So there's my keys. I'm gonna put those in my pocket. Oh, and with it being so hot out, a lady must have her fan. Actually, this feels good right now, even though I'm in an air-conditioned house. You don't hear me saying that because we're supposed to be in the 18th century, but Every lady would have had a fan, and there's even a language of fans, like, you know, that come hither look. Or if you watch the George Washington miniseries that was made in the 80s with Barry Bostwick and Jacqueline Smith, she goes all into the language of the fan. And if you draw the fan across your lips, it means you want to be kissed. Yeah. So there's a language about a fan. So we're gonna put that in there. There goes my fan. Now, I got these two things from Colonial Williamsburg just because I thought they were so cool. These are clay. These are just made out of clay and they've got, they're a little thinner in the middle, a little wider on the end. Can you possibly guess what these were? They were wig curlers. These were to make those curls in your, in your Marie Antoinette wig, or you probably could actually use, really use them in your hair and tie them on with rags. So I just brought these to show you. If I put these in my pocket, uh, they'll probably break. And besides that, no lady would be caught dead fixing her hair out in public anyway and reattaching curlers in the middle of broad daylight in polite society. So there's those two curlers. I just thought they were really cute. And then I have this teeny weeny little thing. It says Holy Bible. And most ladies, and especially young girls, carried and this is, this is the whole Bible, y'all. Wait, was that a map? What was that? Okay, I need my glasses on. This is pretty interesting. I've looked at this before, but how did I miss that? It's a picture. And it's so tiny, I still can't even, even with my glasses on. So more than likely there would be a little magnifying glass in here. And I actually have one of those in the other room that's in a little bag. But this is called a thumb Bible. And ladies and little girls would always carry this in their pocket. I kid you not. People were very moral back then. And um, you wanted to have your scriptures to hand. So the little thumb Bible. And if you find these, I want you all to Google thumb Bibles and then Google images. And you will see little tiny antique thumb Bibles that are leather bound that are for sale on antique websites and they're hundreds of dollars. This one is plastic. I got this online. So this didn't cost hardly anything. It's, but it's still the full Bible in teeny weeny tiny little letters that you would need a magnifying glass to read.
So that's going into my pocket. So here's my pocket with all my goodies. I would tie this. I usually wear mine outside so that I don't have to be digging around in the side of my skirt to find that slit and then find the other slit. And these could also be very, very, if you were a young lady and you're still not married, um, these might be very intricately embroidered all over the outside with cruel work embroidery to show your needle skills. And you would have worn that on the outside and said, looky here, I can sew all of these things and I'm making them someone a very good wife. And that was the whole point, was to show off your needle skills. So this is my pocket. These are the things that are in my pocket. And I found, have you all ever heard the poem, uh, Lucy Lockett? It's a nursery rhyme. Let's get the old glasses back on again. This is the cutest thing. So if you can imagine the tune of Yankee Doodle. Okay, so the tune of Yankee Doodle and then this poem. And this goes back to the early 1800s. And there's two versions. This one says, Lucy Lockett lost her pocket. Kitty Fisher found it. Not a penny was there in it, only ribbon round it. So there you go. So that perfectly describes only ribbon round it. She lost her pocket. Well, how did Lucy Lockett lose her pocket? It probably came untied. She's a little girl. She's playing outside. And little girls even had pockets on their dresses. And so it probably came undone and fell down on the ground. And then another little girl found it. Another version was Lucy Lockett lost her pocket. Kitty Fisher found it. Nothing in it, nothing in it, but a binder around it. Same thing. So think of Yankee Doodle. Lucy Lockett lost her pocket. Kitty Fisher found it. Not a penny was there in it. Only ribbon round it. Isn't that cute? So there's our pocket. And hopefully, hopefully you will make one of these because like I said, it's just two pieces of, of fabric. You can even um, have scrap. And I've actually gone to museums where antique pockets are still there and they have, and they're made out of patchwork, like a quilt. So you could even make a whole bunch of patches, make a little patchwork design, and then cut it out with your paper pattern, put a cotton backing on it, do the regular binding. I think I brought some, yeah. This is just double-sided, double uh, what does it say? Single fold bias tape, but it says single fold, but what it is, is it's actually, it's already folded over, so all you have to do is just do that, and then you won't have raw edges. So that's your, that's your bias tape, and I picked a pretty red color to go with the red flowers because red's my favorite color, and then again, like I said, all you're gonna do is take your twill tape, and you can even use ribbon for this, folks, and fold your twill tape in half and sew it over the top, and you'll sew that shut, and then you've got your strings hanging out the side. So that is our 18th century pocket tutorial. Extremely easy, um, you will love it. And I even have ladies come in and buy them that don't do reenacting. And uh, one lady, uh, she rescues baby birds, and she would actually tie this around her waist and carry a baby squirrel or a baby bird in there to keep it warm next to her body. So, you know, um, think of the fanny pack of the 18th century, only a lot better looking than a fanny pack. So I hope you all will make these. Um, kits are on the website. Um, if you don't want to buy a kit, uh, it's just extremely simple. Like I said, it's just basically a teardrop shape with the top cut off. It, there is no perfect size. You can make it whatever size you want. You can make it smaller. You can make it larger if you want to make one yourself. Very super easy. Thank you for watching, and um, I'll see you all later. Bye-bye.